Hey everyone, welcome back to another Beast of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian series reviews. Today we're taking a look at the Utah Ceratops. Another bold and bright figure from Beast of the Mesozoic and this thing looks absolutely incredible. Just love that Gila monster inspired uh, paint job on it and it's another big, big figure uh, ready to destroy all your shelf space in your collection. This figure retails for $99.99. If you want to pick this figure up, I'll leave a link down below to Creative Beast Studios. Can't believe it's been two years already and Wave 3 is finally here. And now our Ceratopsian collections are complete. And we just have to wait probably about a little less than a year for the Tyrannosaurs. And then it's going to get crazy with all the space that these figures are going to take up. I just can't wait to start pairing these things up with their uh, Tyrannosaur uh, counterparts. So enough chit chat, let's go with the package really quick so we can crack this figure open. You got the nice window display with the Utah Ceratops in full view. You got some beautiful artwork on the sleeve and then turn it over to the side. You got the Beast of the Mesozoic logo and the outline of the Triceratops and then turn it around to the back. You get a nice checklist of all the Wave 3 figures and all these figures are absolutely huge. You got the same uh, artwork on the sleeve right here with some facts about Utah Ceratops. You can remove the sleeve to get a full view of that checklist. So enough about the packaging. Let's crack this figure open and take a closer look. Alright, let's have a nice 360 degree view of the Utah Ceratops. Another beautiful figure. This whole line is just full of gorgeously painted figures and this Utah Ceratops is up there with the best of them. I just love all that contrasting red, orange, and black. The paint job, especially on the head, is giving off very big Darth Maul vibes and I absolutely love that. Now like most figures in this series, the color inspirations are taken from real life reptiles and amphibians and this is probably the easiest one to guess which animal this is based off of. It's the Gila monster and I just think this whole thing just looks absolutely great. Love the paint job on the horns. They're probably the most natural looking horns on any of the figures in the series. We've come a long way from those uh, weird Cheshire cat uh, horns on the uh, Medusa Ceratops. But yeah, just love all the contrasting colors on there. The head sculpt is absolutely beautiful. And I just love these big dinosaur figures. They're just so much fun to play around with. And now let's just do a couple quick measurements. This Utah Ceratops is... 14 inches long from the tip of the snout to the tip of that short tail and just a little bit under seven inches tall to the top of the frill so utah ceratops in real life was around 23 feet long so i put this figure somewhere in that 119 scale range so it's doing a great job of uh keeping within that 118 scale range the line is going for and just like all figures in the series you do get a nice collector card with the utah ceratops and on the back you have facts about the species so let's zoom in and take a look at some of the finer details on this figure, starting with this beautiful head sculpt. I really love how the paint job came out on this figure. I just love all this black and how it contrasts with all this deep orange and red. Like I said, this figure gives off very, very big Dark Maul vibes. That's probably why I'm liking it a lot. I'm a huge fan of Star Wars. But yeah, this is another great figure. I think this is definitely uh, up there. Uh, in like the top five figures uh, in this line, how this one turned out. I'm liking this one way more than I thought it would. It's just absolutely gorgeous once you get it in hand. Let's take a look at how those horns came out. Like I said, the horns on this figure are beautifully painted. I think they're one of the more natural looking horns uh, of any figure in this series. And just the detail and all the texture in. And just the use of brown give them a very, very natural look. Same thing with the beak. You got all the same color scheme on the beak. And let's just check out all the knobs and spikes on the frill. You can see that very natural looking, have a nice dry brushing of gray that give them a very you know dry and natural look. And just look at that intricate pattern on the frill. That is just great with all that deep orange and red highlighted by that black. Just absolutely gorgeous look. I just, I, I'm gonna use the word gorgeous a lot in this uh, review because that's how good this figure is. And here's a view of the frill from the front. And let's swing it back around to the side and take a look at the eye. And another thing that I really like about this figure, I like the eye. The pupil is really dilated on this one. Usually the pupil is a little bit smaller on the uh, Ceratopsian figures. But you can see that the eye is yellow with that really, really dilated black pupil. It looks like this Utah Ceratops chow down on some magic mushrooms. And it's about to lose its heavy peens, tripping all the way back to the Triassic. 
So party on, Utah Ceratops, party on, do your thing, and then turn the figure to the back. You can actually see there is some pattern on the back of the frill. You got some nice orange in there. You got that nice uh, wash of yellow to highlight all that beautiful scale detail. And then opening up the mouth, the jaw, and this one's kind of tight. I really got to fight it to open it up, but you can see you have some deep purple in there for the gum tissue uh there are teeth in there like i every time i do one of these reviews just the way my lights are you can't really see the teeth but you do have nice rows of teeth on the upper and lower jaws and there is a tongue in there you can just barely make it out if you stick your finger in there you can do articulate that tongue and move it around but just why the way the head is sculpted you really can't see that tongue as well as you could on some of the other ceratopsian figures that actually have shorter beaks and let's just take a look at the underside of the head. You got some nice black in there, a little bit of a cream coat on the throat, and then going down to the neck, you can see all that beautiful scale detail mixed in with that orange, red, and black, and then going down to the main body, some more of that beautiful scale detail. Love all the washes on here, it really highlights the scales. Now, I do have a little bit of a paint rub. You can see it on the shoulder and the neck joint right here, and I actually do have it on the other side i think the paint might have been wet when this was placed in the packaging it's not terrible i can just easily go over that with like just a dry brush of black paint and that would fix it but you know it's just something to keep an eye out for and then going down to the front legs go all that nice black yellow and red you see the toe claws are painted a white color they have a nice glossy coat and then going down to the main body you can see more little scales and all that Beautiful black markings on here. Like I said, this, this color scheme just came out absolutely fantastic. Nice scale detail along the legs. Same thing on the hind feet. You got that glossy white paint. And then turn the figure over. You got some nice belly detail. Uh, all highlighted by a nice cream coat. And then going down to the tail. Yep, right before the uh, tail joint, we do have our butthole. There's our cloaca. And then going down to the tail, you get some more of that nice striping on there. And look, look at the figure from the top. And you get some more deep uh, red and oranges on there. A little bit of a dry brushing of black on the hip region. So yeah, this thing just turned out absolutely beautiful, beautiful looking. So beautiful, my camera doesn't want to focus on it half the time. But yeah, I really dig in the pattern on the head. Just love it. Just love that Dr. Maul look. Now for articulation, we already kind of covered the mouth, but that's the furthest it can open. And it can close almost flush, a lot better than some of the other figures, especially when you compare it to the Taurosaurus and Triceratops. And then if you have a joint right here, you get a little bit of wiggly waggly at the base of the neck. Head can look up that far and you can get some nice downward movement. To, uh, let's adjust the camera just a little bit. The uh, beak can almost touch the ground, and then you have this neck joint right here. And then using all those joints in tandem, you can get some really, really nice side-to-side -side movement. Going down to the front legs, they can swing out a little bit. You get under 90 degrees of bend at that elbow joint, and then it will click a couple places. You can get the leg completely straight out, and then a little wiggle at the... Uh, wrist joint and side to side movement and then going down to the main body you do have uh, torso articulation and you can also tilt it up a little bit to change the uh, angle of the hips or push it down to flatten the hips and then also from the top you do get some nice side to side movement with that joint and then for the hind legs they can do 360 degrees you get a little bit of bend at the knee and then at the ankle, you get a couple of clicks on the ankle joint and then a little bit of up and down movement and side to side on that ankle joint. And then for the tail, you can swing up, swing down, and you can get some nice side to side movement. So yeah, articulation on these figures is pretty good. I just love the option of posing my dinosaur figures. This has a lot more personality to them. And now moving on to comparisons. Here it is with one of the Jurassic World figures. Here it is with Alan Grant. And let's compare it to some T-Rex figures from other companies. Here it is with the Papo Green Standing T-Rex. And here it is with PNSO's Rex. And why not? Let's do it with Namu's Once and Future King. And I'll always do this T-Rex comparison until we actually get our hands on the Beast of the Mesozoic version. Here it is with 
Kenner's Red Rex, and that's roughly the size that the uh, Big T-Rex from Beast of the Mesozoic is going to be. And here it is with PNSO's Triceratops, and don't worry, I do have the new version. On the way, should have that one in really soon. And you know, I can't help myself with this one. Here is Mattel's always too small Triceratops. You know, I do like the sculpt of this figure, but you know, a lot of us to collect the Jurassic World line is just way too small, and Mattel really, really needs to get on the ball and give us a bigger one. And next, let's do some Beast of Mesozoic comparisons. Here it is with the smallest figure in the line for now, the Zuni Ceratops. And let's take out the Cosmo Ceratops and the Nasuto Ceratops. You have a nice Kaparowitz formation uh, group shot. And we will be getting the Terra Typhonus probably like in a year and a half or two. And then can we actually have uh, you know all four of those figures interacting on our shelves? I think it's a great idea to have you know, a lot of these Tyrannosaurus pair up with these Ceratopsians. And let's take out the Pachy Rhinosaurus. Now, both these figures look like they're about the same size. That's because they do share most of the same parts, but the Utah Ceratops is actually bulkier. The torso piece on the Utah Ceratops, uh, just the Utah and the Pentaceratops, are the only two figures that actually share this bulkier, wider torso piece. You can see the difference compared Next to the Pachyrhinosaurus, this one's actually a much thicker uh, thicker, and heftier figure. So that is probably the reason why this one cost about $10 more than the Pachy. And lastly, let's compare it to next one of the big boys. Here it is next to the beautiful and huge and heavy Taurosaurus. So final thoughts on the Utah Ceratops. You know, I'm pretty much repeating myself at this point doing all these reviews on these figures. They're all great. It just comes down to your preference. You know, which species do you prefer and which color patterns appeal to you most. But like I always say, you can't go wrong owning at least one of these figures. Once you get one, you're going to want more of them. And this Utah Ceratops de definitely ranks uh, high on the list of my favorite figure from the series. Just because of that black and red color pattern. Just love that. And just love how natural the horn turned out on this one. And another thing that I don't bring up often in these reviews. I absolutely love the backgrounds that come inside the packaging. I use them all the time uh, for photos on my Instagram. You know, cheap plug. You know, if you want to follow my Instagram, the link is down below in the description. And the one that comes with Utah Ceratops is this beautiful sunset background. And just with the colors on the Utah Ceratops, it just blends right into the background. I think this look absolutely awesome displayed with them and like i said at the beginning of the review you can order this figure directly from creative b studios it retails for 99.99 and the link to creative b studios is down below in the description so that will do it for the review i only have two more figures left to review in the ceratopsian series that's the xenoceratops and sinoceratops so that's gonna be a bittersweet when i finish that because i really enjoyed reviewing these figures over the last year but it's only be a short little break before uh new stuff from creative beast comes out hopefully by may we'll have the 118 scale protoceratops satakasaurus dromaeosaur and velociraptor and then a few months after that we'll be rolling into september again and the uh, first wave of the tyrannosaurs should be ready so yeah a lot coming up from uh the studio and i am absolutely loving it and I also have the PNSO Triceratops and Iguanodon coming in. And who knows what else PNSO has in store for us. Big rumor is there's an Acrocanthosaurus. And I will go nuts for that. Because Acrocanthosaurus is one of my favorite theropod dinosaurs. And uh, we really need a definitive version of that species. So that would do it. If you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously. And it's greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next one.